Hey guys, this video is going to be an uh, introduction to Apophysis, which is a cool little free and open source program for creating fractal flames, which these images that you can see right here are some simple examples of the types of fractals that you can create in Apophysis. These are just some really simple examples. The possibilities for this program are virtually endless. You can make some really interesting designs and lots of interesting combinations of variations and parameters that you can change to determine how your fractals will turn out. It's a really fun program to mess around with and just experiment and try out different things and you end up with some really cool results. It's a great program for making desktop wallpapers and I know a lot of people like to use fractals for effects in form signatures and things like that. So it's a lot of fun to just play with. It's free and I think you guys should definitely check out this program. Okay, so this is the website of Apophysis. It's just really simple, apophysis.org. The first thing you'll probably notice is that it says it's a program just for Windows. So this tutorial is going to be primarily geared towards Windows users. However, there is another version of this program. Since it is open source, another person took the source code and ported it to Java. So if you have Java installed on your Mac or Linux computer, then you can try this Apophysis J program, which is just a Java port of Apophysis. So I haven't personally used this myself, but you can give it a shot and try it out. I'm sure it works just fine. But as I said, we'll be focusing on Apophysis for Windows in this video. So once you come to this website, I'll put the links for both of these pages in the description, by the way. You just want to click on the Downloads button. And there's two things you're going to need to download. First of all, just click on this top link and save this file onto your computer. This is the installer for the Apophysis 2.02 .02 version. I've already done this previously, so I'm not going to do it now. Then you're going to click on this link to follow this, to this page at SourceForge. Click on this big button right here. That'll redirect you to this page, and then you'll get another little pop-up, and just save that other file on your computer. This is for the new version, the 2.09 executable. So once you save both of those on your computer, you should have these two files in your downloads folder or wherever you save them. This top one, this is the 2.02 .02 version. This is the uh, installer for the program. So you just double click on that. You'll get a little simple wizard that pops up and guides you through the installation process. It's really easy. I think you can just basically keep all the default settings and that'll guide you right through the process to install Apophysis on your computer. But once you've done that, you'll just have the 2.02 .02 version. So in order to get the newer version, you need to take this 2.09 executable and copy it or cut it or whatever and put it into your the folder created through this installation process. When you installed this up here, it should have created a folder like this inside of your program files. You'll get all this stuff when you install it, except you won't have this Apophysis 2.09 right here. So that's why we had to download it separately and put it into this folder with everything else. So once you've installed Apophysis just like this, all you do is double click on the 2.09 version and you're ready to start up the program. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's a small little window. This is just one part of the program though. On this left side over here we have a list of pre-made random fractals that the program randomly generates when you start it up. You can click on a couple of these to get some example ideas of things you can create with this program. These are just some really, really simple examples. You can make way more complex and much more interesting to look at designs with this program. One of the main other parts that you'll be using is if you go to View, Editor, this will bring up this separate window, which has these little triangles and things. And this is the Transform Editor, which is where you'll be doing mostly all the work for creating a fractal. So your fractal is essentially made up of these different transforms, which are each represented over here by a triangle. And each triangle or transform has all these different variations that you could potentially turn on or off and set to any value in between 0 or 1 or any value at all, really, even negative numbers. The way you make a fractal is just you add these different transforms to your fractal, move these triangles around, resize them, rotate them, add different variations, and voila, you have a fractal. So you can see this is a really simple example. It just has two transforms, 1 and 2. And each of them, all it has is a linear variation set to 1 and everything else set to 0. Every time you add a new transform, which you can do by pressing this button up here, 
it'll automatically set the linear, trans linear variation to 1 and everything else will be at 0. You can double click on the 1 to turn it back to 0 or you can just type in 0 and click enter. And you can turn on a different variation like spherical by double clicking that, it'll automatically go to 1. Or you can type in anything you want like 3 or negative 1 or 1.32, whatever you want. Um, you can also click on the name of the variation and drag it left and right to change the value that way. And then you can move around these triangles over here by just clicking on them and dragging to change the way your fractal looks. You can also click on one of the sides to rotate the triangle. And you can click on this hypotenuse of the triangle to uh, increase and decrease the size of the triangle, which will affect the look of your fractal as well. Other things you can do, you go to View, Adjust. This gives you a separate little window which you can use to move your fractal around, zoom in and out, move it around within the window, um, rotate it, position it however you want on your canvas. You can also click down here in this big preview window and just drag it around that way to reposition it. In this other window up here, you also have settings for your gradient, which will determine the colors you use. You have all these different preset gradients built into the program. You can choose one of those to use for the colors of your fractal. You can try dragging this and it'll rotate through the colors. You can also come back over here to your transform editor, and click on this colors tab and play with this slider. You can change that value for each one of your three transforms or however many transforms you have and that'll affect the colors as well. You can see just by making some simple changes, this fractal already looks basically completely different. It's hard to predict exactly what your changes are going to do to the fractal. You just have to try it out, move things around, play with it, and you'll end up with something cool probably. Other settings you can change around up here in this um, adjust window, you can click on rendering. Gamma is kind of like the contrast. So if you lower this down, um, it makes the bright stuff brighter and the kind of darker stuff in the background, it makes it even darker. And yeah, you can move this around. Um, I think it actually looks kind of cool now.